Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics and today I wanted to talk about water quality. In a recent video, somebody made a comment that one of our tanks looked brown and dirty. Well, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, you know that we try to maintain excellent water quality standards, but I wanted to address that particular topic, so stay tuned. So why don't we go ahead and start with a good example. We've got two fish tanks here. The one on the left has crystal clear water. The one on the right looks a little murky, looks a little dirty. So my question to you, which of the two tanks is healthier for fish? Now, if you said the one on the left, I am sorry to inform you, that would be wrong. And here's why. Right now, that tank has three parts per million ammonia. And as some of us know, Ammonia at that high a concentration will eventually kill fish if it is not reduced. So it's actually a very toxic environment for fish right now. If you're interested in hearing more about ammonia or nitrites or the nitrogen cycle, I will put a card in the upper right hand corner so you can check out those videos. But that tank is extremely unhealthy for fish and if we left it that way, if you put fish in there, they would die. If you said the tank on the right is more healthy for fish, Sorry to inform you, you're still wrong. And here's why, and this is a really important point, and it's the point of this video. You cannot determine water quality by looking at water. You can't. The only water parameter that you could get some clue as to what's going on by looking at a tank is if you have extreme temperatures. If the water's almost boiling, that would be bad for fish. If the water is frozen, obviously that's bad for fish too. But outside of those things, it's incredibly difficult to gain any useful information about water parameters just by looking at water. I'm not talking about if there's livestock in the water and we're seeing how they're interacting with the environment, maybe they're not looking so good. But if you're just looking at tanks like I've shown you here, you cannot determine water quality just by looking at them. All right, so how do we determine if the water is good for our fish? You have to test it. All right, so there are certain water parameters that we need to test to make sure the water is safe for fish. One, temperature. The vast majority of fish that we would find at a tropical fish store are probably going to do okay somewhere between 74 and about 80-ish, maybe 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Some fish, like goldfish and goodyads, might like it a little cooler. Some fish, like discus and certain types of plecos, they might like it warmer than that. But the vast majority of fish that we keep, right around 74, 80, 81. pH. You cannot tell what the pH is in an aquatic environment just by looking at it. The pH in either one of those tanks could have been four and a half and be very acidic and not conducive to fish growth. It could have been nine and a half and kill just about everything. Most fish that we would find at a fish store are probably going to do all right as long as the water is roughly above a 6.5 or so, 6.7, and isn't too much above an 8. Obviously, there are fish that prefer lower or higher pHs, but a lot of the fish that we keep are going to do well right around neutral. And it is most important when it comes to water parameters to keep the water parameters stable as opposed to trying to reach some optimal level and have fluctuation. So if your water is naturally a 7, keep it at a 7. Don't try to boost it up or, or bring it down because if you introduce inconsistencies, that's when fish become stressed. So we have temperature, we have pH. The other one, and something we've already mentioned, what's going on with nitrogen in the fish tank? Ammonia. If there's ammonia in the tank, that's more, likely, more than likely going to be bad. If you've got nitrites in the tank, that's also going to be toxic. Nitrates at high enough sustained levels will also be toxic to fish. If you're interested in the nitrogen cycle, again, I will put that card in the upper right hand corner. You can learn more about it there. Other things to think about, water hardness. Again, some fish like relatively soft water where the dissolved minerals in that water, it's not very concentrated. Other fish like African cichlids would prefer harder water. That is not something you're going to be able to determine just by looking at a fish tank. Another important aspect, and sometimes one that is easily overlooked, is dissolved oxygen. So one of the reasons why we run filters and air stones and sponge filters and hang on the back filters and canister filters is to get water flow to agitate the surface of the water so that dissolved oxygen is moving throughout your aquarium. If dissolved oxygen is low, that can be a big problem. You know, other things that might be difficult to measure, but maybe in the tank, what if there's a heavy metal buildup, things like copper? Or what if you're using, uh, what if you use chemicals to clean some of the decorations or the inside of the fish tank? Never do that. But if it was done, 
that could release toxins into the tank that could be very bad for fish. So the point is, we have to be able to measure water parameters to determine whether or not a tank is healthy, whether or not the water is safe for the fish that inhabit that tank. All right, so coming full circle then, the comment that was left was about one of the tanks where we had a lot of driftwood in that tank, and that driftwood releases a fair amount of tannins. The fish themselves are doing fantastic. The tank, however, it's not crystal clear. Now, I have found personally that some of the tanks where we get the best growth and the best fry and offspring development are in tanks where there's a little bit of algae, a little bit of detritus that's built up, not a lot, but the water parameters, nitrate levels are very low, no ammonia, no nitrites, but maybe it's not the most appealing to the eye, but it happens to be the environment that the fish enjoy the most when it comes to reproduction. If you look in nature, very rarely are you gonna find crystal clear waters in a fresh water environment. Often it may be difficult to see. Some of you may know that if you've gone fishing or you have gone boating or you've interacted, swam in a river. Uh, these things, uh, these water systems are generally not going to be crystal clear. All right, everybody. So I hope you found that useful. I hope it gives you something to think about. If you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.